Okay, this is a signal generator we're working on now. I've got it out of the case and just looking over what needs to be done. There's three cap, cap bleh, can't talk this morning. Three capacitors that need to be replaced. The rest are ceramic. This is a replacement, and it's a 103J, which I had to look up because I don't always know what those are. Turns out a 103 is is where is it? I had it on the screen a minute ago. 103 is a point zero one okay so that is the replacement that somebody put in it so point zero one here's what it replaced c13 point one it is the wrong value a 104 j would have been a point one so that's uh significantly wrong so that could be part of my issue there as i said one of these bands doesn't work now that capacitor we have to figure out what it does Eh, it just goes to the modulation thing. It probably has nothing to do with the bands, but I'm going to... I have the whole manual, as uh, I just showed you on my lap here. Uh, so I'm going to replace that with a proper value. I'm going to replace the two electrolytics. Those are both uh, 20 microfarad, 150 volts, and I have two 22 microfarad, 200 volts. And I'm not restuffing that. It'll be hard to restuff anyway. It's got a terminal strip in there. It's got they're gonna mount there. And then I'm gonna go through the manual. Oh, there's another replacement I just noticed. What is that? That's not original to this kit, I don't think. That looks like a mica cap. Probably is. I have to make sure that's the right value. And I'm going to recheck all the wiring because I have the manual. And this this was built as a kit back in the day. Knight was a company similar to uh, Heathkit, and they made kits. And I don't know if that's going to focus. You can see the 33 on there. I th think that's the value. I'm trying to. Can't tell. I'm going to have to look closer at that and. Google it and double check it. Make sure that's the right value. The rest of these are ceramics and I believe they're all original to the kit, but I'm going to check every value of every capacitor in here. I won't bore you with that on camera. And if I find any other discrepancies, I'll bring it to your attention and we'll go from there. I, yeah, I think that is a, a replacement mica. The reason being, there's one of the uh, domino type micas there, and that's probably what was originally there. Why they replaced that, I don't know. I bought this off eBay, as I buy a lot of things, and the guy said it was restored. I guess his restoration was replacing those two capacitors, uh, one of which is out of value. Uh, so, I'm going to look it over. I'm not doing this all on camera right now, and I will double check the values of all capacitors and then I will report back. This is Tom. Okay. The 33 is the value and what that actually says on that is 33 plus minus 20 percent. And this isn't the greatest copy but we'll try to focus in on this. That is the one in question. 33 micro microfarad. Uh, which would be Pika Ferrets, I do believe. Mica cap, that's what it replaced, and it is a replacement because you can see that's square, like the other domino type ones that are in this set. So, these other ones are all ceramics. Um, that one we already talked about, I'm going to replace that with the proper value. These are resistors, these are all ceramics, and I believe they're all original. What's in there is original. He just replaced that one. And that's it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to replace the electrolytics. I'm going to replace the 0.01 with a 0.1. And then I'm going to start looking over the wiring and make sure it's wired properly. And check the coils. And each coil, and I suspect, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a switch problem. I have not cleaned the switch yet. Uh, there's four 
bands, four, well actually there's five. A, B, C, D, and E. There are five settings you can put this to with different frequency ranges. I do not remember off the top of my head which one was not working, but I know at least one was not. And I only see four coils, so two of those bands must share a coil for the bands. I'm going to check all that wiring. I'm wondering if there's a problem with the wiring to these coils or a problem with the switch putting the band in and out of uh, circuit. And of course I'll check these coils for continuity. Maybe we have a break in one of the coils. So I'll have to figure that out. So that stuff I will try to do on camera. I'm going to set up the tripod. We'll do some testing of these coils. Make sure they're all have continuity. We'll check resistors maybe. Although I'm always leery of testing resistors in circuit because it throws the values off. You gotta to really properly test them. You gotta unsolder one end of them. And I'll check all of the ceramics and make sure they are proper and make sure all the wiring is correct. So I'll probably be back on a tripod testing these coils. I think that'll be the next thing to do after I replace these three capacitors. Okay, this is Tom. Forgive the shaky camera work, a little quick update. You can see this terminal strip here I'm working on replacing a capacitor. And a little weird thing I noticed. You see how the base of that terminal strip where it's mounted to the chassis, it's mounted to the base of that tube socket holder. And it's between two wafers. I have a feeling that was done by mistake because you'll notice there's a wire, bare wire, coming down right there to that screw to ground it and I think it's supposed to be grounded the person must have realized their mistake and ran a wire there instead of pulling out the whole thing and remounting it although all you would have to do is get that screw out and take a screw and you know work it underneath that wafer. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to verify that that is ground and I'm going to properly ground it if that is the case. If they mounted that on top of that insulated wafer. So what I've done here is that capacitor that was a 0.01 has now been replaced and I haven't soldered it up yet with a 0.1 and that's the big white one. That's actually a kilovolt or one thousand volts. Uh, it calls for a 400 volt, but that's what I had on hand, and it'll work just fine. That replaces the 0 .01 with a 0 .1, and uh, I verified that all the connections to that switch right there under my thumb is correct. All these ca ceramic capacitors are correct. All those wiring is correct. Yeah, I just found that one little snafu with the grounding, which uh, I think I'm going to do that because it won't be hard to, I don't think, to remount that properly so it's grounded to the chassis. Chassis. I'll probably leave that extra wire they left in stuck in there because it isn't hurting anything. It's just a double insulate, double insurance that it's going to ground and uh, so that'll complete this little corner and then I'll move on to check the rest of the wiring kind of as I'm going here I'm checking the wiring checking the uh, capacitors and I haven't checked any resistors yet uh, I, I don't know that there's any point because I like I said they're not it's not accurate to check resistors in circuit you can do it and you'll get a reading and sometimes they're close but they're if they're wrong then you always wonder well is it because it's in a circuit being the values being changed you never really quite trust your own reading which brings me to Jim Lindeness he made a, a point about an electrical engineering professor told him once the trouble with meters is they give you a reading meaning you'd have to then interpret what the reading means and, and that's a case of you know 
if I get a reading on these resistors that's off, do I trust that the resistor's off or do I trust that the circuit is changing the value of the resistor? In which case you gotta unsolder it anyway to check one and check it, lift it out of the out of the circuit. Okay, upward and onward I will finish uh, fixing that ground and I'll come back. I think I could take another tip from my good friend Jim Lindenus, who occasionally makes a sign that says on and sticks it on the chassis. I think it's Jim that does that. Anyway, I just had this plugged in powering it up to check something and uh, almost started shooting the video and left it on because I have to move it around and stick my hand in there. Bad idea. It is off. It is turned off. It is unplugged. Okay, a uh, little update. We did move the terminal strip underneath. I verified in the manual that yes, it is supposed to be underneath, and that is ground. So now that's underneath. And I, I, I left the wire. I figured it ain't gonna hurt anything. I'm not gonna waste my time pulling it out. My next, we will turn our attention to changing the 20 double, the two 20 microfarad uh, filter caps for the AC. The other thing that I didn't mention before and I'm gonna now talk about is that little square thing right there and if you don't know what that is that is a selenium rectifier which rectifies your AC into DC voltage uh, for use in the radio or in this case signal generator and they are notorious for if they go bad they have this horrible smoky smell that comes pouring out of them I have no idea I haven't had it happen to me fortunately uh, but I'm not gonna find out I don't always replace them it all depends on what it's being used in this one I'm going to replace and that's why I'm discussing it there's considerable debate if you search the antique radio forum for selenium rectifier you will find some very long threads discussing the merits of leaving or taking out selenium rectifiers uh, and it's debatable there's very experienced people that say leave them and there's very experienced people that say take them out in this case i'm taking it out i'm going to take it out we're going to put a little terminal strip in there and they get replaced with a silicone diode and a resistor to make sure you have the same amount of voltage on the other side of it and that is part of what i want to discuss in this video uh, and what we're going to address. So what happens here? The red wire here is coming out of my uh, transformer and that's AC. When it comes out of the other side it's DC and then that goes through here and it's filtered by the two capacitors in here to further smooth the AC down into a pure DC voltage because uh, in, in, and I call it a smoothing capacitor because that's what they call them in England. I, I watch a guy Ray on, on YouTube all the time and follow his, uh, actually you gotta pay like twenty some dollars to join the radio workshop but it's an well worth it. He, he does weekly videos of what he's repairing in the shop. He runs a professional radio workshop he knows what he's doing. He only works with old tube radios. Um, very interesting, funny, enjoyable guy to watch. And for 20 some dollars, it's well worth joining. And I'm gonna stick the URL at the bottom here so you see it on the screen. He calls them smoothing capacitors because they smooth the DC. In the US, we call them filtering capacitors. And smoothing is actually more accurate because if you know what an AC wave look form looks like, it's like a sinusoidal wave and we're smoothing it down to a flat line getting rid of the uh, the bumps after it goes through a, rect a rectifier either a tube or in this case a rectifier diode it becomes smoother but it's still bumpy it's not completely smooth and this these capacitors smooth out that bumpy sinusoidal wave into a smooth flat DC voltage which is what you need for the rest of the circuits. So this will be replaced with our two electrolytics. This will, will be replaced with a silicone diode and a resistor. And how are we going to determine the resistor? 
There's formulas for this. I don't totally understand it. I've read some of it. It's dependent on how many plates are here. You can count these plates. Sorry, I'm not focusing well. You can count these plates, and each plate has a certain amount of resistance, and from one side to the other, you're, it creates resistance across here. And a silicone diode, they're so efficient, they have almost no resistance. So when you put one in here without a resistor, it's too open. There's, there's not enough resistance in it. So you always, and you'll end up with a voltage on the other side that's different than the original. So what I've done is I've, I've done it off camera because I can't hold the camera and take m measurements easily unless I get out my tripod. I have measured the voltage on either side of this. AC on this side, DC on this side. What I have come up with is we have 125.3 AC and we have 147.8 DC on the other side of that diode right there. When I replace the uh, this with the silicone diode, I will try different failure resistors until I match 147.8 DC or close to it, around 148. And we'll, you know, I'll start with like a 100 ohm resistor, see what I get, maybe go to 150, 200, you know, whatever the case may be. And depending on the amount of resistance that you provide, you want to match the same voltage that this originally provided. Um, whether that is exactly what this thing wants or needs in the circuit, I don't know because I don't know how efficient these are. But the manual, I looked through the manual, uh, the build manual that I have for this unit, and it doesn't give voltage readings on this, so I don't know what they want. I'm guessing 150. Uh, it's probably supposed to be 150. I got 147.8. but So that'll be next uh, when I come back, unless I think come across something else to show you. This will be out. We'll have a terminal strip in and the diode. This will be out and we'll have two electrolytic capacitors in there. And then I think, and I'm going to set up the tripod, I think, and we'll experiment with, with doing uh, different resistors to match this. And I've done no other checks on these coils yet. I'll save that for the end. I'm, I'm going to replace all the parts, verify all the wiring, and then check these coils for uh, whether there's any open coils, as I mentioned earlier. And as I get into this unit here, I'm going to verify all the wiring that's going to this terminal strip. Also, I notice this white wire has been cut and taped, which drives me crazy. I hate electrical tape. So I'm going to replace that wire with a solid wire with no tape and verify all the wires, and I'll be back. This is Tom.